I'm working through the mechanics section in the 2018 NSC exam paper. This is always question two in the physics paper, paper one. Question 1.1 and 1.2 of multiple choice also refer to mechanics. And so we start here with question 1.1, which reads as follows. Inertia is the tendency of an object to, and we know that inertia is essentially a statement of Newton's first law, which says that when an object is not acted upon by a net force, the object continues in its state of motion or uniform motion. So option C, the tendency of an object to remain at rest or in the state of uniform motion is a correct option. And this question did have two possibilities because option D, maintain its velocity when a non-zero net force is acting on it, is also an acceptable option. So option C or D are both correct because inertia is essentially a restatement of Newton's first law. Question 1.2 reads as follows. A person stands on a bathroom scale that is fixed to the floor of a lift as shown in the diagram below. It's important to remember here that the lift cable, the tension in this lift cable, generally will give the same reading or the tension in that cable will give the same reading as what is being seen on the scale. So what we will find is that when the lift accelerates upward, we will find a greater reading than the weight of the person on the scale because the person always has a constant force of gravity pulling them downward. So the tension in the rope and the reading on the scale are typically the same where the force of gravity downward is always constant. The question here reads, the reading on the scale is largest when the lift moves. And now this makes most sense when we understand that the tension in the rope and the reading on the scale are the same. And so in order for this reading to be as big as possible, we would need the tension in the rope to be far greater pulling this lift upwards than the force of gravity pulling it downward. And what that would result in is a tension force greater than the force of gravity would result in a net force that acts upwards. And since there is a net force acting upwards, there is an acceleration acting upwards. So the correct option here is option C, when the lift moves upwards at an increasing speed, meaning upward with an acceleration or a positive acceleration. Now question two, which is the question relating to mechanics, here reads as follows. A block of mass eight kilograms is placed on a rough horizontal surface. The eight kilogram block, which is connected to a two kilogram block by means of a light inextensible string, passing over a light frictionless pulley, starts sliding from point A as shown below. Here we can see that this is going to be sliding from left to right because the two kilogram mass is moving downward. So what we should immediately see is that this is all the positive direction. So the block is going to be moving from point A through point B to point C. Question 2.1, state Newton's second law in words. This is the most common law that we are asked to state, and it is very important to get the statement correct. And so the statement as given in the memorandum reads as follows. When a non-zero net or resultant force acts on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of the force with an acceleration that is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. As mentioned, Newton's second law is the most common question that is asked, and so it is definitely worth learning this definition for any paper that is going to question mechanics. And then as we can see in the memorandum, they have underlined certain words and phrases which says that these must all be present in exactly that way in order to get all the marks for that question. Question 2.2 asks us to draw a labeled free body diagram for this eight kilogram block. And we do that by starting and showing that the dot of this free body diagram represents the center of mass of this object, which has a force of gravity acting downward on it. Since this object is on a surface, there is going to be a normal force that acts vertically or perpendicularly upwards to that surface. 
as we have been told here, this object is moving from left to right, and there is a friction force. We know this because the question has stated a rough horizontal surface. So a rough horizontal surface will automatically tell us that there's a friction force acting on this object. And then we can see here that there is a tension force that is acting at an angle to the horizontal here. It is not necessary to show that angle here. We can just show that there is a tension force acting at an angle. No free body diagram is complete without a key that explains each label. So we would typically say N is the normal force, T is the tension force, FG is the force of gravity, and friction, or F, is the friction force. It is very important to remember the key as there are marks allocated to that, especially when the question has specified a labeled free body diagram. Question 2.3. When the 8 kilogram block reaches point B, the angle between the string and the horizontal is 15 degrees, and the acceleration of the system is 1.32 meters per second per second. Important to remember here, as with any two body system, the two body system that is linked by a rope, and we have been told it is an inextensible string, which means that it cannot stretch, and so that means that these two objects will have exactly the same acceleration. So when they say the system accelerates, they mean the eight kilogram block as well as the two kilogram block are both accelerating at 1.32 meters per second. The other thing to remember is that this string is linked by a pulley. And so these two objects will have the same string and therefore the same tension. The tension in these strings or in this string is the same. All that the pulley does is it changes the direction of the force. It does not change the magnitude in any way. Question 2.3.1 asks, give a reason why the system is not in equilibrium. And we can see that the system is not in equilibrium because we have been told that it is accelerating at 1.32 meters per second per second. Since it is accelerating, that means that there must be a net force acting on the object and equilibrium is defined by a net force equal to zero. So the system is clearly not in equilibrium because the system is accelerating, which tells us that there is a net force that is acting on this object. Question 2.3.2 question 2 .2 says, use the two kilogram mass to calculate the tension in the string. And we can do that by saying that since we know that the system is accelerating, that means that Newton's second law must apply, which means that F net is equal to M times A. For this two kilogram mass, we can draw ourselves a simple free body diagram that shows that there are only two forces acting on it, those being the force of gravity and the tension force. We have said that downward is our positive direction and therefore the net force is calculated by taking the force of gravity and subtracting the tension force once again, equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration, where the force of gravity is the product of this object's mass, two kilograms and gravitational acceleration of on Earth given as 9.8, minus the unknown tension force, which is again equal to the mass of this object, two kilograms multiplied by the acceleration of the system of 1.32. This allows us then to solve, to find that the tension in this rope is 16.96 Newtons. Question 2.3.3 asks us to calculate the kinetic frictional force between the eight kilogram block and the horizontal surface. And what's important for us to realize here is that this tension force is applied at an angle of 15 degrees, which means that the tension force has two components to it. The tension force that we have calculated of 16.96 Newtons has a horizontal component that is pulling this object to the right. What I'm going to call it is TH for T horizontal. And we can see that since this angle here is 15 degrees, we can see that the horizontal component of the tension force is going to be calculated by T cos of theta because that is the adjacent side. And then we can also see that this tension force is going to have a vertical component TV, which is going to be T sine of that angle theta. 
So what we need to see here is we need to see that for our eight kilogram object, there are two forces acting on it in the horizontal plane. There is the horizontal component of the tension force and there is the friction force that is opposing the motion. So from that, we can then say our net force acting on this object must be equal to this object's mass times its acceleration, where the net force in this case is the force pulling it to the right, the horizontal component of tension, minus the force opposing the motion friction, which is equal to this object's mass times its acceleration. We have already said that the horizontal component is that tension T, which is 16.96 times cos of the angle there, cos of 15, which tells us that the horizontal component of tension is 16.38 newtons. This then allows us to substitute these values in to say 16.38 newtons that is pulling this object to the right minus the unknown frictional force is equal to the mass given as eight kilograms multiplied by the acceleration of this entire system. Again, because it is linked by a rope, this acceleration of one object is exactly the same as the acceleration of the other. And that then allows us to find a friction force of 5.82 Newtons. Important to note here, they've asked us to calculate the kinetic frictional force, which we must remember is a vector. And therefore, since it is a vector, it must have direction. And we say the direction in this case is to the left. Question 2.4, as the eight kilogram block moves from B to C, the kinetic frictional force between the eight kilogram block and the horizontal surface is not constant. Give a reason for this statement. Now, what we should see here is that as this eight kilogram block moves towards the right, the angle of this rope is going to increase. I'm going to draw it up here where we can see that that tension force is going to change because the angle in this rope is going to increase. What that means is that the vertical component of tension is going to play a bigger, bigger role or the vertical component of tension is going to increase. What this also tells us is then that the normal force that is acting on this object is therefore going to decrease because the vertical component of tension is doing more and therefore the normal force can do less. And as a result from the formula, friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. We can say that since the normal force decreases, the friction force will decrease as well. And so we can see that the answer as given in the memo tells us that the normal force decreases, which is essentially the summary here, it is only one mark. However, this kind of question is always difficult to know what they're looking for in the memo. And so we need to write a full explanation where we explain that we understand that by changing the angle, we are changing the vertical component of the tension force. By changing the vertical component of the tension force, we are changing the normal force. And then because the normal force decreases, the friction will decrease as well. Unfortunately, in this case, that is only worth that one mark. And finally, the horizontal surface on which the eight kilogram block is moving is replaced by another horizontal surface made from a different material. 2.5, will the kinetic frictional force calculated in 2.3.3 above change? Choose yes, no, and give a reason for your answer. And so what we should hopefully see here is that a coefficient of friction by definition is the coefficient for two specific surfaces. So in this case, it's for the surface that exists between this block and this table. So as soon as we change this block, which is what they are suggesting here in question 2.5, we will automatically have a new coefficient of friction because the coefficient is the relationship between those two surfaces. And so the correct answer here would be to say that yes, the coefficient of friction has changed. To say that yes, the coefficient has changed because the coefficient depends on the nature of the surfaces. So yes, 
the frictional force will change because the coefficient of friction is dependent on the nature of the surfaces that are in contact with each other. So that is the end of the mechanics section or mechanics section of the 2018 NSC paper. There are a number of important things here that stand out where people commonly make mistakes. The first one is in our definition, Newton's second law being the most common definition that is asked in this section, so it is definitely one worth learning. Free body diagrams, the most common errors are forgetting to include a key, and also some people would include the components of an angular force, so in this case the horizontal component and the vertical component, that would cost you marks and so we do not include components in free body diagrams and then when we are answering questions where we require a formula always start with the formula as it is given in the formula sheet then substitute with what equation you would actually use here fg minus t or whatever the case may be and then substitute and then an answer obviously all answers must have units to be sure that the answer is complete and then when we are asked to give an explanation, it is very difficult to know which part of the explanation is allocated marks. And so we must explain each concept fully to ensure that all marks are gathered.